Hello, so welcome to our room and stage. So we will start today with Martin Gerald on um, satellite cybersecurity in a unified networking world. And I will give you your word now. And Thank you very much. We can begin. Okay, uh, we've just passed noon, so it's a uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to all of you in the room, and uh, welcome to those of you um, streaming at the moment online. Yes, my name is Martin Gerald, uh, the Chief of International Program Development with the GVF, the Global VSAT Forum. I am a member of the Secretariat of the GVF, and um, I'm here today um, presenting um, sort of on behalf of the GVF's Cybersecurity Task Force. And um, I just wanted to uh, introduce you to the co-chairs of that task force, um, the two organizations concerned, Hughes Network Systems, and VTI Direct are major and full members of the Global VSAT Forum. And you can see the names there of our two co-chairs, uh, Matthew Kenyon, Vice President for Network and Security Operations, and Annie uh, Tomasevsky, CIO and Chief uh, Information Security Officer with iDirect. <clears throat> so, who exactly are we? We were founded in 1997. We bring together organizations engaged in the delivery of advanced broadband and narrowband satellite services to consumers, to the commercial and government sectors, and we now, quite recently, have also begun to encompass the area we call new space, for example, the Earth observation environment. Traditionally, we have been purely communications, both narrowband and broadband, as I say, but now the area of new space with the increased number of um, non-geostationary satellites going into orbit for non-communications purposes, but to serve other types of applications, including, for example, Earth observation, such organizations are now embraced within our membership. We are headquartered in London. We are a British registered organization. <clears throat> we are independent. Uh, we're non-partisan, non-profit, and we have a global membership. On the left of the slide, you can see some of our full members. Our membership runs into a number of hundreds, but these are the large full members of the organization. And if anybody is interested in finding out the details of our larger membership, I do have a copy of uh, our printed version of our directory. Given that we're coming near to the end of the year, we have very few of these, hence I only have one copy with me but information about our broader membership uh, can be um, gained from our website. I mentioned that the membership is broad-based. <clears throat> well, we represent every major region of the world and every sector of the satellite industry, which includes fixed and mobile satellite operators, satellite network operators, teleports, Earth station manufacturers, system integrators, value-added and enhanced service providers, telecoms carriers, consultants, law firms, and users. As part of our organizational structure, we have a number of working groups. One of those, the RWG, covers regulatory and spectrum matters. Another, the MRA, covers work to do with type approvals of earth station equipment. <clears throat> Another, one of our geographically focused working groups, focuses on Africa, matters to do with regulation and, um, and uh, spectrum matters. 
We have the MSF, which is the Maritime SATCOM Forum, about which a little more later, but is an example of one of our groups that focuses on a particular user vertical of satellite communication solutions. We also are heavily engaged in disaster preparedness work. <clears throat> and additionally, we have the CSTF. The Cybersecurity Task Force was established a little over three years ago. It comprises cybersecurity experts and representatives from across the satellite industry. And um, it determines best practices by creating recommendations for specifications for both hardware and software, as well as in network connectivity. So what do we do and who do we do it with? <clears throat> well, in the top box, you can see a reflection of the uh, various working groups that I've already mentioned. But I've listed here a wide range of organizations with which we heavily engage, collaborate, and cooperate. <clears throat> Our subject today isn't matters related to spectrum, um, the spectrum uh, competitiveness between satellite and terrestrial uses of available spectrum uh, resources. But in that capacity, as well as other capacities, we work closely with the International Telecommunication Union, with the European Space Agency, with organizations like the World Broadcasting Unions, the International Maritime Organization in the uh, area of um, disaster recovery with NetHope, and we are also the only private sector representative on the United Nations Emergency Telecommunications Cluster. Now, in mentioning this today, this is not the central facet of what I'm here to talk about today, but given that our interest today is that of cybersecurity over satellite, naturally, these all organizations the users of satellite communication solutions and services are themselves stakeholders. They have a direct and clear representative interest in ensuring a safe and secure cyber world, whether it's general or whether it incorporates satellite-based solutions. It also exemplifies the extent to which how vital satellite is to communications for all of these various types of users. On the lower line, I've indicated a range of organizations with which we work, both from within the satellite industry, our sister organizations, like SOA, IRG, SIA, and so on. But also on the, on the left-hand side, the Small Cell Forum, and indeed with the GSMA organizations that represent terrestrial broadband communication solutions, but as I will indicate in following slides, are essentially partners in what we are increasingly seeing as a unified networking communications world. Our interest is in growing the converging communications ecosystem. Some of you may well have seen this slide before. Essentially, whereas in the past, we can think of, describe, or characterize the communications world as being somewhat segmented. Different types of terrestrial solutions based on different types of technologies, as well as satellite-based communication solutions. It's certainly true that for many, many years, just to take one example, that the commercial mobile network operator community has, in many parts of the world, relied upon satellite for its backhauling solutions. So satellite and terrestrial have been partners, but that is going to be increasingly the case in the future. And you only have to look at issues related to the Internet of Things. You only have to look at statements made by organizations such as the 3G 
partnership. The, publication, the published works of the 2020 Networld, of the European Commission, of the European Space Agency, of the 5G PPP, and so on. That the word satellite, within their communications that actually set out the future of what the 5G world will look like, satellite is an absolutely integral part, a fully integrated part. Now, equally, we recognize that amongst the terrestrial um, mobile operator community, sometimes satellite is seen as being something on the periphery. But we argue that that will change because it must change. Now, a little bit more about the CSTF. It was established, as I say, in 2014. Why was it established? <clears throat> well, in the very first month of 2014, there began a pattern of various information coming out through various publications, online publications and so on, which actually was questioning the cyber integrity, the, 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 the veracity, the reliability in cybersecurity terms of satellite-based services. We then quickly jumped into action because, as I indicated earlier on, GVF is the only global entity representing the global satellite industry. I mentioned about our sister associations, but some of them only represent parts of the value chain or parts of the world's geography. We cover the whole value chain and the global geography. So around about a month or so after this publication, which has links with the US Department of Homeland Security, it's the CERT, we jumped into action and said, we must make the situation vis-a-vis -vis satellite's role in cybersecurity absolutely clear. A little while later, after the foundation of the group, a second and more widely known publication produced this. Uh, the IO Active Report, very well respected, and in April of 2014, it actually put forward some very, very serious questions and questioning, well, is satellite really secure? Now, the industry wanted to respond for two reasons, what two clear reasons. One, satellite in general terms is one of the most secure platforms that can actually be used to guarantee cybersecurity. But equally, recognizing that yes, there are issues and questions to be addressed, and that we as an industry are addressing them. More recently, with one of our sister associations, the Satellite Industry Association in the United States, collaborated on a joint cybersecurity initiative. And this was effectively launched in mid-November last year. <clears throat> and this statement, and I do have some copies here of the complete statement, it's some four pages long. Um, I can make it available more widely by email if you, if you wish, but I, I have about half a dozen copies here for anybody that would like a hard copy today. What did this document do? <clears throat> well, it articulated the core principles for cybersecurity, encouraging all segments of the satellite industry continue to continue efforts to address dynamic challenges. It emphasized the criticality of cybersecurity to the satellite industry's core goal of providing mission critical, highly reliable, and highly secure connectivity. And quote, the satellite industry has a long history of providing secure solutions to a diverse range of global customers. And my earlier slide about the range of the organizations from broadcasting, from the UN, et cetera, et cetera, illustrates that fact. Incidentally, if you want also to um, pick up on a recently published article addressing 
this issue. It's an article entitled The Coming Satellite Cyber Crisis and it brings in factors related to the Internet of Things, related to 5G and so on, as well as the connected car. Other forms of increasing broadband internet access availability whilst being mobile, including at 35,000 feet when traveling on a commercial airliner. So that URL at the bottom of the slide there would give you access to this particular article. Now, the key thing about these core principles is that they are not intended to be a comprehensive roadmap or an exhaustive list. But nevertheless, the following considerations should be at the center of private and government efforts. Volunteerism is important. Industry-led efforts and public-private partnerships are the optimal way to address cybersecurity at the national or international level. Robust cybersecurity is aided by voluntary information sharing, free from fear of adverse consequences. And I think we heard remarks in that regard uh, first thing this morning from both the uh, NATO speaker and the speaker from the, uh, the Dutch uh, provider. And satellite industry organizations should use industry best practices for risk management. And indeed, when the CSTF was founded, it did initially look to the internet industry generally for examples of best practice. Now going on, uh, this particular document, this joint statement, expands in detail on these general principles with details as to how they may be implemented by companies throughout the satellite industry and through government efforts. And the statement additionally details initiatives within national governments, within intergovernmental organizations and international standards bodies um, to evidence the satellite industry's foundational and long-standing commitment to cybersecurity. So, best practice, risk mitigation, and collaboration. The core principles of the joint statement stress that security and risk management should be part of an organization's overall corporate culture. Organizations should implement and maintain best practices to protect against evolving threats, including by leveraging industry-driven resources to inform their own development of voluntary, proactive, risk-based approaches to risk mitigation. Collaboration, not regulation, is the best way for organizations to manage cyber risks. And voluntary information sharing amongst and within the private sector, between the private sector and government, and between the private sector and solutions end users is vital. Now the full text of the core principles can actually be seen at that particular URL, but as I said, I do have some copies here. Now, <clears throat> what's important about some of these points? We all know in this room that communications and IT technology is advancing at a very, very rapid rate and it's accelerating all of the time. The reason that we emphasize collaboration between the stakeholders on an essentially voluntary basis is because if there is too much regulatory or government-led intervention in this field by setting certain types of standards, those standards can themselves become obstacles, can become problematic, simply because they tend to lag behind. The making of regulations, the implementation of regulations, finds it very, very difficult to keep up with the actual accelerating pace of technological developments. 
the whole point of this document of core principles, the whole point in establishing the cybersecurity task force within GVF is to actually have an engine of development from within the industry that is dealing with new cybersecurity related issues as they arise on a far more effective and efficient basis from within than simply responding and having to adhere to externally imposed government regulation. I didn't uh, put all those up, did I? There it is. There's the URL that I mentioned. So it's important to get this message out to as many relevant parties as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. This slide addresses how we are getting the message out within, across the entire breadth of the satellite community itself. So, for example, this is a great international big show for the IT sector. The satellite industry has its own versions. Global Sat Show is just one of many, but the reason I'm citing this particular one here is because it's one of those that's next on my agenda. I will be going to Istanbul. I will be moderating a number of sessions. Now, whilst neither of those sessions are directly subject-wise focused on cyber security. The point is, let's look at the first one. Satellite gets smart. And let's look at some of the highlighted terms here, where we see IoT, clearly central to our discussions about cyber security, related to that machine-to-machine uh, -machine communications, the connected car, aviation, all key areas that are going to be engaged in the use of satellite services and satellite services connected in a new 5G integrated unified communications world and therefore an interest in cyber security. Let's take another example. Something else coming up on my own personal agenda next January. An event called CABSAT takes place every year in Dubai. In that event, we do have a specific panel session, Innovative Cyber Security Dynamics, exploring the full understanding, the nature and scale of the cyber threat, focusing in on satellite and network security, and focusing in on satellite industry initiatives, initiatives that serve to do two things. The industry making it clear to its end user, customers, the purchasers of satellite solutions, that the industry is working to deal with cyber security related issues. I mentioned our own maritime SATCOM forum a little while ago. That forum has its own multifaceted agenda one of which is cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is very, very important in the maritime space. Recently, in fact, just a couple of days ago, it was reported that back in July, there was an incident affecting a big Singapore ship owner, the BW Group. They were cyber attacked. It didn't take down their operations too severely, but in an industry, the maritime industry, that is A, a big user of satellite communication solutions, B, is becoming increasingly the target of cyber attacks. So there's an overlap. And, quite coincidentally, just this month, a new cyber crime reporting site for the maritime industry is being launched this month. It's a collaboration between Airbus Industry and an organization called the CSO Alliance, which is involved in the maritime space generally. 
And um, essentially, it's all about providing a portal to provide members with cybersecurity information, news about incidents and how to handle them and so on. And this is on the back of, back uh, last year, BIMCO, which is one of the organizations representing the maritime industry, and a number of um, other associations in that industry, but represented by BIMCO as far as the publication and promulgation of a publication on the guidelines on cybersecurity on board ships. So the industry as a satellite communication solution end user is taking it seriously, but we also create a bigger broader context with the CSTF to look at this as being an example of one customer, one type of customer. Other customers, of course, in all of the other user verticals that use satellite communication solutions. I didn't pull those up, did I? <laughs> My apologies, this uh, screen doesn't advance in the same way. I'll just give you a moment to actually look through those. But these are the points that I've just mentioned. And finally, to illustrate um, how our approach is comprehensive and broad, the co-chair of the GVF Maritime SATCOM Forum is Roger Adamson. He works for an outfit, he runs an outfit called Future Nautics, which is uh, very, very firmly entrenched uh, in his work with, uh, with the maritime industry. So we are working very closely together with one particular example, the maritime in this particular example, of the satellite communication solutions end user community that is very concerned, like the satellite industry itself, about cyber security issues. Now I think I only have a few minutes to go, so I'm going to pull these up very, very quickly. Getting the message out to a bigger and broader part of the satellite communication solution and user community. GVF itself runs a number of events. We have a general connectivity event, an oil field connectivity event, cellular backhaul coming up within the next couple of weeks, AeroConnect, and then finally towards the end of the year, um, a, a, a conference focusing on higher throughput satellites. Now, all of these create the opportunity to progressively focus on the message of the importance of cybersecurity in a satellite communication solutions context for these various end user groupings of satellite communication solutions. So as well as working specifically with individual end user verticals, like maritime, one which we have been um, traditionally very deeply involved with, that is now becoming true of these other vertical areas as well. And indeed, by way of example of the continued way in which the satellite industry is really very, very focused on this now, there is a specific CyberSat event taking place in uh, just outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Now, I'd like to close simply by saying that the GVF Cybersecurity Task Force was founded two and a half years ago to act as a coordination center for satellite security knowledge. Focused on what the industry is doing to promote cybersecurity issues within the satellite provider community and in our continuing work with our end user vertical market communities. This is an extremely important area and it's only going to grow in importance because as we move towards this unified network world where satellite together with various types of terrestrial communications technology is part of this unified system and given 
as we've heard earlier today, the community of those out there, the bad guys that want to hack us, is getting bigger, seemingly getting stronger, more intent, and getting greedier. Um, we all have to ensure that we on the, uh, the guys wearing the, and ladies wearing the white hats are uh, sticking together and working together. But ensuring that the people actually taking the leadership in this are those that are working actually at the, the coal face, if you like, or at the chalk face of providing and using communication solutions. Certainly, big, broad, policy, regulatory-led um, environment is important, but the best people to do the job of protecting ourselves as providers and our customers as our users against cyber security incursion is uh, to continue to maintain our own house in the best order. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your kind attention and um, I will take any questions if there's time. There isn't time, apparently. Right, that was supposed to be about 20 minutes, but I'm very conscious of the fact that I do tend to go on a little bit, so I've reached my half an hour limit. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you all.